almost five years ago, I was at this amazing company, Flying S, where we talked about Matt Sura, the investment of their first Matt Sura. As you can see, the blue continues to grow everywhere. But what happens when you have that much information, that many pallet changes, that much automation going into a cell? Well, we got Kyle here today because they recently invested in Datanomic so that we can all understand a little bit more about automation might be happening, but we have to know really the data and details when it's running, how it's running, why did it go down? Everything that goes into that, Kyle is the man. Mark threw him right under the bus so we could get started today. Kyle, thank you so much for being here, my friend. Tony, glad to have you. We always appreciate the bravery. Data is so very important. We're calling this the fourth industrial revolution. We utilize 4.0 technology, but I think we're beyond that at this point. Data is how we now, in my opinion, can go from surviving in manufacturing to thriving in manufacturing. What do you think about the importance of data? Uh, I'm a nerd, right? I'm an engineer. I'm a nerd too, buddy. <laughs> I love the data. I like seeing the graphs. I like all the data points. Um, some people care about certain data other than, you know, more than others. Um, you know, it's, this started out as, hey, is this machine on and off? You know, we got programmers, we got operators. Um, hey, is my machine still running? I hit go a long time ago or I'm bouncing between machines. Um, you know, it, am I having issues? So, uh, we like to see all that data. We also want to know, you know, why are our machines stopped? They're not running. You know, is it because we don't have enough operators, uh, running between different machines in a certain cell? Um, is it because we're waiting on inspection times? Is it because, you know, what are all these things that we can kind of improve upon instead of just taking um, people's word for it, you know, mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, I feel like um, I've been having some issues with the bar feeder or, yeah, we keep having these robot issues or oh, I've been running that machine all day. What what does that number actually equate to? And then how can we make that useful? I find that all fascinating. I'm going to tell you a super quick story, Kyle. When I was in the machining world, I ran this thing that was kind of like an automated Six Sigma. And it allowed me to figure out where my bottlenecks were and where I could make adjustments. And was it in investing in a new machine? Was it in personnel? Was it something that I could just do better overall? Mm -hmm. And I apply that information to the conversation we're having right now because it seems like familiar ground. There are people out there who only want the on-off, the green, the red, right? Your, our buddy Peter, for example, is like, that's all I wanted. I hired Kyle because I think we can do more with datanomics. Yeah. Our buddy Mark is an Excel wizard. He's very goal-oriented. and He knows these are the goals we're trying to reach. But at the end of the day, it sounds like it's more about strategy, understanding why and where and how we can do the best for our machines and our people at the same time, especially in a world of high mix, low volume, where you could just constantly be running new jobs. Is it the CMM or is it my machines? Is it my personnel? Are they taking breaks? Is it a Monday or a Friday? Is that a slow day mentally? You know what I mean? So yep. you're using it as a, as a real strategy, right? Yeah, right. We want to we wanna make a plan and then try to execute that plan. Inevitably, it's going to go a little wrong. And then we want to understand, you know, well, how could we have tried to do that better? Or, you know, we're in the middle of this run. How can we start improving that, making things faster? Um, one of the first things we really love to see was the actual cycle time, yes. you know, uh, as you may know, like, you know, we use master cam here. We get a, it tells us a number. All the operators know that that's just kind of not quite right. After you do all the things, how long does it actually take us to get our first part and then make the rest that we need to make? You know, are we spending a lot of time on these things? How can we make that better? At the end of the day, when I hear that description, Kyle, I think this is probably better for my colleagues who are doing quoting. This is probably better for my customers who are expecting certain lead times and certain quality from their products to actually know the amount of time I'm truly investing, not the guest time, not the assumed time, not the theoretical time, but the actual time. And if I'm a machinist, I would want to know that too. Yeah. I would want to know if something went down and why it happened. How long did it take me to take a scrap bin and roll it across 
the, the, the machine shop, because you guys continue to expand, by the way. Oh, yeah. Last time I was here, there was maybe one or two buildings. Now I feel like there's five or six buildings, so congratulations on the expansion, but maybe I have to take something further to reach a colleague or whatever it might be. If I'm a machinist, this is also something I want to know. Yeah, yeah, the machinist, you know, it's funny. Some people could care less to see the data. Um, some machinists, they're racing themselves, you know, they're like, Hey, this is, yeah, right. This is, this is, uh, this is the numbers I got from this run. Let's see if I can do that a little bit quicker and, and still make a good part. Um, and it, it's always interesting to see how they kind of interact and, and use the different bits of data. Yeah. Kyle, here at Flying S, um, I look at the, all the masters, the growth, there was really only one or two when I was here a couple of years ago. So congratulations on the growth, all these blue machines. I see a couple of bigger ones, some of the MAM 72s, um, and then you have several of those. I see the small one that we started, MX 850 we see here. So I know part sizes are variant. I bring that up because we're going to step into another area of your shop that's fairly new that has massive parts with massive cycle times because here, the MAM do have some pretty good parts that might run several hours at a time. The smaller one that are running over here, maybe just, you know, half hour, hour and a half, that type of thing. But when we get into potentially days or even a week's time of machining now we're taking data to a completely different world of conversation aren't we yep yep you have you know your small parts your medium-sized parts or large parts they all use that data differently and you know the bigger it gets the more complex it gets the more those numbers really start to matter um and as data nerds we like to know that information exactly. let's get on over there buddy sound great here, we had to do this a little bit, right? These are do sexy machines. They're making massive parts. We love yeah. talking about data. Of course, you and I are both nerds when it comes to that. But I also nerd out a little bit about machining. <laughs> I of definitely course. do. I love it. These machines, I don't know the actual cycle times, but they're a lot longer than some of those smaller pallet chains. This we know. When it comes to gathering data on longer cycle runs, what are you looking for here? Yeah, so immediately, right? the on off of the machine and did it stop for an unknown reason come straight to mind right yeah. the, these some cycle times for these are taking days mm -hmm. you know they were now on the 24 hour scale not the when people are here scale you know did we break a tool did it stop did it alarm out um these are all things that you know people need to monitor sometimes to keep schedules and want to monitor um just to keep things moving along so I've had conversations similar to this. Uh, Datanomics has so many successful customers out there, and we're really grateful that Flyness, with all your secrets, have allowed us to come film in here again. Thank yep. you for that that respect to allow myself and MTD to come in. But when I get into the topic of these long runs, I've heard people a lot smarter than me, Kyle. I promise <laughs> you, uh, describe things like we have twenty tools on a twenty-four hour run but only two of them are about 80% of my cycle time that are running the whole time. So we take the data and the information, maybe put redundant pool in it and figure out how to take the 80% of the cycle time out of the two tools of the 20 tools and reduce that to overall reduce the actual runtime. Do you do things like that? Or am I just kind of getting excited about possibilities at this point? Yeah, right. That's kind of the next phase of this. You know, some of these, the, you know, this is relatively new to us, these big machines in this big building, but uh, right, you're talking optimization. Those are the things we'd want to know next, right? We've made a, we've made a few good parts now. Um, can we see how much some of these tools are running during our program? Yeah, Datanomics makes it super easy. Like a few button clicks. Here's a nice graph that shows you these two tools run this much in your program. Um, let's start there. You know, can we optimize some of those uh, paths? Can we, you know, what can we do? We improve tool life so that maybe we don't have to change those out. Maybe we need to know when to change those out now because we're running for so long. So I think about us both being kind of data nerds and I'm happy and proud to admit that for everyone out there. I <laughs> love data. I love information. I love analytics. I love figuring out how to do things better, faster. You know, customers are important. So knowing that we are kind of both data nerds, right? And, and I, it's probably more of a theoretical question as some aspects of these bigger machines you're still learning about and some of the other areas, you, you know, you're figuring out using that as strategy. My theoretical idea is how much information do you think you've gained or how much do you think you assumed previously before really knowing the truth as you, as you dive more and more into these strategies? 
Yeah, yeah, like you're saying, na- n- we've kind of had a, a mindset change there, right? It used to be, you know, what do you guys think? Let's bring in a few different people. What do you guys think? What do you guys feel? Can we can we collect some data from some of our other programs to help back that up? Now it's like, hey, first question is, hey, uh, can datanomics tell us this thing? <laughs> you know, is it just that simple? Um, and some of the times, yeah, some of the times it is. So um, it's it's great to now have that tool to be able to to justify and back up some of those ideas or questions that, that pop up. I heard a rumor, Kyle, and you can confirm or deny. It's totally up to you. But I heard a rumor that you guys were a year in with Datanomics and, and you were getting ready to have a meeting about, you know, should we do this? Can we continue with Datanomics, right? And uh, you walked in with a whole bunch of data from out of <laughs> what seemingly was nowhere. And you sat down and just laid it all out, all the information you were gathering. Is this a true story? So you are really being successful with the Datanomics te- technology. Yeah, yeah. We sat down. We kind of met um, a lot of the management team. Hey, let's go over some of this from the, you know, the 30,000 foot view. Let's look at some of this. Um, we look at Datanomics. You know, Datanomics has a nice user interface. Here's some of kind of the higher level stuff. But, you know, here's the all the spreadsheets, all the numbers. Here, you know, what do you guys think? What, do you, what are the questions that you guys think we could use some of this data for? We generated some of that. We got to see some of the numbers. You know, several people's ideas were kind of, or, or assumptions were mm-hmm. kind of uh, changed. Like, oh yeah, I can see that now, now that we have this uh, graph. Um, and so other ideas and, and such were confirmed. So, you know. Exactly why I like data. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> exactly. When everyone, oh, I see, okay. That was my assumption, but now I can see it. Actually, the data being being gathered, that's, so I want to wrap all of this up, Kyle. I know how much you love the camera, but we're going to wrap this up despite how much longer you want to be on here and, and ask you about integration, right? Okay. We discussed the users on the floor utilizing it, maybe getting better, figuring out some of the questions they might have. We looked at a, a 20,000, 30,000 foot of management saying this is what we can look at, machines on and off, why we want to use it more, what strategies can we implement to really improve. We understand that this is one of those NDA type places where we got to sign it in order to even get in here because of some of the complicated parts that you're making and how important it is to have data in order to maybe understand exactly how to continually do it better, especially when you're doing a lot of one offs. Right. Yep. So integration, it can't take a year and a half in order to implement. We got to know information pretty quickly. And we need to know what's going on in our shop. Was this complicated? Was it easy? And tell me about customer service if there was a question or if something was missing from the software. Yeah, right. All great questions. Um, Datanox is honestly the easiest software uh, company I've ever had to work with. Uh, integration, super easy. It was simple. Kind of the only directive I sort of had um, from other people was, hey, we don't really want to be spending a lot of other people's time with this, you know? If an operator has to put in a ton of data, you know, that's not real. We're not really getting the benefit of that. We are getting the data, but now he's also spending time. Uh, you know, so did not collect this all kind of through the controller with a simple uh, Ethernet port. And they had other options. You know, we could have went wireless. Um, they had all the documentation. When we had questions to their support team, you know, they were answering. When we were trying to learn the program, you know, hey, can it do this? Here's kind of what I, the information I'm looking for. You know, they were quick on the response. Um, we were able to hook up to all our machines. You know, we've seen the Masuras, we've seen the Kaninchis now. Um, we have Haas machines as well. We have older ones, we have newer ones. Um, super easy. They, ha- they had answers and if they didn't have answers, they were super willing and easy to work with to, you know, solve that and get us solved. Kyle, you have been amazing today. Thank you for hopping on camera with me. Yeah, I've mentioned several times about all this kind of secret components you guys make. So we're going to turn the cameras off now and you and I are going to go look at some and continue to make all the audience jealous right now. (laughs) Because you have some of the most outstanding parts. Kudos to Fly at S to continue growth and expansion, the investment in machines and the future of their technology. This is one of those companies you must look into if you're looking for high quality parts that need to be made in just about any facet. But when we're looking at aerospace, that's something that stands out. This is my buddy, Kyle. They actually have the data now collected to make sure that they can share anything that's needed. And certainly the strategies here being implemented day in and day out. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you again soon.